my name is Grace. Today I'm going to read the story. Jack and the Beanstalk. There's chapter 5. There's chapter 1 to chapter 5. Chapter 1. Cow of Slave. Jack was very, very hungry. He searched the house of for something to eat, but he didn't find anything, not even a bean. Jack and his mother were very poor. They lived alone in a little cottage. They, the only thing they wondered was the cow named Milky White Moo, and she was so old she didn't run out of milk. Can you make yourself unself? asked Jack's mother, br brushing past with a broom. But there's nothing to do, complained Jack. Jack's mother stopped sweeping and sat down. We have nothing, she said. Nothing to eat, nothing to drink, nothing to sell, nothing. Except milky white, Jack pointed out. There was a long pass followed by a long, low tummy grumble. All right, said Jack's mother. Tomorrow you must take Milky White to market. Get the best price you can. <clears throat> Finally, Jack had a job to do at the first sign of down he ran outside morning milky white he said are you going to market moo said milky white she didn't understand the word they hadn't gone far then they met an old man what a fine cow he said, where are you taking her? To market, replied Jack. Then go on further. I will be there. Here, the old old man re reached deep into his pocket and took out five jarn beads. Sorry, it doesn't make better. Beans, said Jack. Match beans, answered the man. Plant them today, and you will see a beanstalk reaching to the clouds by morning. Wow, that's amazing, said Jack. And you will give them to me for old milky white the old man nodded it's a deal jack cried he rubbled the beans hand over milky white thanked the man thanked it the man and ran off Chapter 2 The Beanstalk One on the way home, yeah, Jack looked closely at the beans. They don't look magic, he said, forming. Oh dear, 
what's mother going to say? He soon found out you are back. Early called his mother. How much did you get for Michael White? Jack didn't do answer. Jack instead he opened his fair feast and showed her the beans. His mother was furious. furious. She threw the beans to the ground and sent Jack to his room. Thank you, there's no lunch. Thank you, there's no lunch or supper, she yelled. Jack hide under his blanket, feeling foolish. Finally, night came and he slept, fell asleep. When he woke up, his room was still dark, but he call, could hear birds chattering. Strange, he thought, and went out of the window. A thick cutting of leaves blocked out of the sun. He looked closer and saw a mastery plant reaching out of the sky. The race, he raced it downstairs and bumped it into his mother. Hello, he said timbly timbly what have you done to my garden she screamed jack rushed it past her past her he wanted to climb his beanstalk the Twisted, shooted, made a good ladder. Soon Jack's home was nothing but a dot, and he was feeling rather dizzy. I will just climb as far as the clouds, he decided. Chapter 3 Above the Clouds At last, Jack's hairy bush did and soft, fluffy cloud. He climbed a little higher and almost fell off the beanstalk in surprise. They flew there Floating in the distance, smell of sizzling sausage, different throughout the air. First, thought Jack, hungry, hungry, he had clambering onto the clouds when he heard a little voice. Be careful, it, it said sweetly. Jack saw a tiny figure with wings and a wand. I don't believe it in the fairies. He thought he 
blinked I heard, but the fairy was still there. A tiffering gent who lived in that castle wondered the fairy. I he killed your father. A giant killed my father? Gasped Jack. He was a brave man. She signed it one day. The greedy gained attacked a flock of sheep. Your father rushed it to protect them, and the gained ate them. Just then, a wife of Bancon made Jack's nose twist. I am going to pay this gate a visit, he told the fairy. Jack marched it up to the castle. He wanted to feel brave like his dad, but he just felt hungry. Suddenly, the castle door began to open. Jack hid behind and flower pot. A gate woman opened, carrying a giant water can. Then a giant drop of water splashed on Jack head and don't hit him. Help! He grumbled. Oh, sorry, dear, said the giant woman. I didn't see you come inside to dry off. She pulled Jack from the ground, set him on the plank of their hand, and sailed him sought the vast castle corridors. Fourth chapter. Fee, fee of fun. What does this mean? I cannot understand. In no time, Jack was sitting on the kitchen table. One sausage or two? asked the giant woman. Jack grappled each sausage was as long as him. Um, half please. He answered. He was seeing butter on his third toast. But when he heard a thunder roar. Oh, no, cried the giant woman. That's my husband. If I see you, dearly you will be breakfast. She hid Jack in the empty teapot. Even footstep shot the room. Fee, fee, for. Fum blowed a rumbling voice. I smell the blood of a little man.
Jack slowly lifted the teapot lid. A giant, giant was some stop thing around the kitchen, sniffing the air greedily. The dead monster killed my father," said Jack, terrified. "Be he alive, in be or be he dead, I will cut his bone to make my breed to giant boom." "I am sure you will, dear." Replied the giant's wife, but eat your breakfast first. There's very, very much, and there's Jack. The giant spoon forgot Jack's smell. He closed down even. Mouthful, then lick it. His plant clean, burning my, burning me my hand. He ordered his wife. She placed it a little hand on his hand. Jack watched it. Yes. It clapped, flapped it, its feather, and laid the shiny gold leg. Another golded the giant. Another eggs, plenty of. On his hand, glinting in the morning light, the giant looked very pleased with himself. Then he yarded. He rested his chin on the table and nodded up. Time to escape," thought Jack. He climbed out of the teapot and dropped down just by the guard's hands. The little hand stood trembling by the gold egg. Jack grabbed the hand. Slid down the tablecloth and raced through the cart under the door. A giant dog barked loudly, but Jack kept running. He heard the giant's angry roar and ran even faster. At last, the beanstalk was in sight. Jack flung himself. At it and scrambled down to safety. Mm, they're stalling something. Chapter five: Another Adventure. When Jack's mother saw the hen and licked her lips, "Yum, chicken for dinner," she said. "No way!" cried Jack. "This hen lays golden eggs. She will make us rich." Oh, all the silk stars! Jack's mother began. Just then, he the hen clucked. Flappered her fat features, 
feathers and laid a golden egg. An egg, a week bought Jack and his mother all the need. Life was very comfortable, but also a little dull. One morning, Jack was bleeding in the shed of the beanstalk when the smell of sizzling sausage wanted by. He looked at the beanstalk towering above. Then he looked at the giant's magic can. Maybe the giant has other treasure, he thought. I think it's time for another adventure. Um, The beanstalk seemed much higher than before. When Jack saw the clouds, he was all reading, puffing, and panting. He followed the smell of sausage to the castle kitchen and crept under the door. The giant's wife was whistling by the stove. Please, Mr. Giant, called Jack politely. Do you have half a sausage of spare? Go away, she said. The last boy stole my husband. Hen. Jolid, he still. Hey, go away, she said. The last boy stole my husband. Hen gold she's still in the trouble temper if he finds you here he will grumble you up Oh said Jack turning to leave sorry to bother you wait she said kindly I am sure I can find you something. Jack was munching on a freedom mushroom. When a giant voice he turned around the room. Jack divided divide into the sugar. I smell the blood of a little man, boomed the giant. You are imagining things, Gerald replied his wife. I will feed Fetched you hard. That will climb you as the angry giant sniffed it around the room. His wife 
placed a tiny golden harp on the table. It plays soft, soothing turns all on its own. The giant saw down, closed his eyes, and began to storm. Quick, go, whispered his wife to the sorrow ball. Jack lifted out seeing at a beautiful heart. He twisted it around his arm and flew. The music stopped it and the giant woke up. My heart, he cried, second laughter. He was pointing after Jack. I will grind you bones, you little kefir. As Jack hurried down, the base stopped. It began to say, the giant was climbing down to feed your dad, saw Jack, yelled to his mother, jumping to the ground. Jack gobbled the, the saw. He pulled it back and fought across the thick beanstalk. <laughs> Suddenly, there was a merciful crack. The whole beanstalk toppled to the ground, flying the gate over the distant hills. No one even see him again. With the hand that let gold eggs and a beautiful sing harf, Jack and his mother lived very happily, but sometime Jack found himself gasoline at the beanstalk, stunned, wishing that it would grow once more. Finish yesterday. I read the story. It was fun. Bye.